Because I could not stop for death. Because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. The carriage held but just ourselves and immortality. We slowly drove, he knew no haste, and I had put away my labor and my leisure too for his civility. We passed the school where children strove at recess in the ring. We passed the fields of gazing grain. We passed the setting sun. Or rather, he passed us. The dews drew quivering and chill. For only gossamer, my gown, my tippet, only tool. We paused before a house that seemed a swelling of the ground, the roof was scarcely visible, the cornice in the ground. Since then, tis centuries, and yet feels shorter than the day I first surmised the horses' heads were toward eternity. I died for beauty, but was scarce. I died for beauty, but was scarce, adjusted in the tomb, when one who died for truth was lain in an adjoining room. He questioned softly why I failed. For beauty, I replied, and I for truth, the two are one. We brethren are, he said. And so, as kinsmen met a night, we talked between the rooms until the moss had reached our lips and covered up our names. My life closed twice before its close. My life closed twice before its close. It yet remains to see if immortality unveil a third event to me. So huge, so hopeless to conceive as these that twice befell. Parting is all we know of heaven and all we need of hell. I felt a funeral in my brain. I felt a funeral in my brain, and mourners to and fro kept treading, treading, till it seemed that sense was breaking through. And when they all were seated, a service like a drum kept beating, beating, till I thought my mind was going numb. And then I heard them lift a box and creak across my soul with those same boots of lead again. Then space began to toll as all the heavens were a bell and being but an ear and I and silence some strange race wrecked solidly here. And then a plank in reason broke, and I dropped down and down, and hit a world at every plunge, and finished knowing then. One need not a chamber to be haunted. One need not a chamber to be haunted, one need not be a house. The brain has corridors surpassing material place. Far safer of a midnight meeting, external ghost, than an interior confronting that wider host. Far safer than an abbey gallop, the stones a chase, than moonless one's own self-encounter in lonesome place, our self behind 
ourself concealed should startle most assassin hid in our apartment be horrors least the prudent carries a revolver he bolts the door or looking a superior specter more near i heard a fly buzz when i died i heard a fly buzz when i died the stillness in the room was like the stillness in the air between the heaves of storm the eyes around had wrung them dry and breaths were gathering firm for that last onset when the king be witnessed in the room i willed my keepsakes signed away what portion of me be assignable and then it was there interposed a fly with blue uncertain stumbling buzz between the light and me and then the windows failed and then i could not see to see it was not death for i stood up it was not death for i stood up and all the dead lie down it was not night for all the bells put out their tongues for noon it was not frost for on my flesh i felt sirocco crawl nor fire for just my marble feet could keep a chancel cool and yet it tasted like them all the figures i have seen set orderly for burial reminded me of mine as if my life were shaven and fitted to a frame and could not breathe without a key and twas like midnight sum when everything that ticked has stopped and space stares all around or grisly frost first autumn morns repeal the beating ground but most like chaos stopless cool without a chance or spar or even a report of land to justify despair death sets a thing significant death sets a thing significant the i had hurried by except a perished creature entreat us tenderly to ponder little workmanships in crayon or in wool with this was last her fingers did industrious until the thimble weighed too heavy the stitches stopped themselves then twas put among the dust upon the closet shelves a book i have a friend gave whose pencil here and there had notched the place that pleased him at rest his fingers are now when i read i read not for interrupting tears obliterate the etchings too costly for repairs the last night that she lived the last night that she lived it was a common night except the dying this to us made nature different we noticed smallest things things overlooked before by this great light upon our minds italicized as twere that others could exist while she must finish quite a jealousy for her arose so nearly infinite we waited while she passed it was a narrow time to jostle were our souls to speak at length the notice came she mentioned and forgot then lightly as a reed 
bent to the watered, shivered scarce, consented, and was dead. And we, we placed the hair and drew the head erect, and then an awful leisure was our faith to regulate. The end. Hi, I'm Miss Jana here on behalf of the Charlotte County Libraries and History Division to celebrate April as National Poetry Month with some information about Emily Dickinson. She was born on December 10, 1830 and died on May 15, 1886. Her poems were collected and published after her death. With no authoritative version to go by, there is debate on what is the truest form of her poetry. And so her poems are still being revised with new versions continuing to be published. Her poems are also not titled. Often the first line is used as the title or they are numbered. Along with others, such as Walt Whitman, she is credited with building the foundations of American poetry. She wrote around 2,000 poems. The exact number is likely unknown. According to emilydickinsonmuseum.org, she is the queen of social distancing. She lived a reclusive lifestyle not a lot is known about her, but much is discussed and inferred from her writing. As her poems explore themes of nature, her observations and feelings as an attempt to figure out the world and her experiences. Like Emily Dickinson did, you can write about you or what you know, your observations, feelings, interests, and or experiences. Or, if you'd rather, there are lots of other options and as many ways to write a poem as there are poets writing. You don't have to share what you write or create, but if you'd like to, you can bring your poem to the library and add it to our poetry. You can also bring any poem you have read and enjoyed and decorate it to, to add to our poetry. And again, I'm Miss Jana, and if you have enjoyed learning about Emily Dickinson or want to talk more about her or poetry, you can come see me at the Punta Gorda Charlotte Library. Thank you, and have a wonderful National Poetry Month.